Okay, Hitamek sees to go good day. It is just past noon on Sunday, June 17th, 2018, in the lunar cycle Misamsota, the long rains. And the rains have kind of let up this afternoon. Got some, uh, got some blue sky above us, cumulus clouds all around, but right above us it's blue skies, sun is shining through. And I've got a rattlesnake call. Uh, this one's down just off of Canyon Estates. Um, one of the residents is walking her dog back um, on the pathway of the Canyon Estates Park behind the houses there. And they encountered a rattlesnake. So I'm on my way out there to see if I can find it. And if so, relocate it. So, somewhere right in this strip, she said it was behind a garden, so I don't know if she's talking about these uh, planter areas. I'm just going to search everything. Well, I never did find that snake. Looked around quite a bit, but um, probably it already made its way off. And now our planet has done another revolution. <laughs> another spin on its axis. And um, we've rolled into Monday morning. It's 9.47 in the AM. And I've got my cool Ghostbusters um, coveralls on. Still got my bare feet going. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm gonna go climb up in someone's attic. It's a client that I that I went in um, the attic maybe two months ago where uh, it had been heavily infested at one point. They weren't there when I went up in there myself but I did a lot of cleaning and I pulled out you know a good sized garbage bag full of raccoon dung and stuff. Uh, any case, the client's wife says she thought she heard something up there again. So I'm going to go and find out if uh, anybody has reoccupied that, that space. And then I've got another, my skunk client, down the road. I'm going to go try something different at her place. I'm going to set up a, an empty open cage trap um, instead of the closed one that I've been using. And see if she'll go in the open cage. Sucks for me though, because then... I've got to do it removal by tarp wrapping rather than <laughs> rather than the nice safe closed cage that I get less uh, stinky on. Oh well, got to do something to see if I can get that that mama skunk out of there. Um, but overall, you know, in these monsoons we've been having our long rains, um, my business slows way down. You know, so. I don't know if there'll be any further calls today or not, but let's go check out this guy's attic and see what's happening. Yeah, I think it's all clear. All the same uh, trails and stuff through the insulation, but I don't see any new sign of anybody new being up here. No snake, no raccoon. Now we're gonna go up here and look at no skunk. <laughs> well, I've got a plan. I've got a plan. So, I've been trying for a while with the wooden trap zero success with that and then try for a while with the small trap caught one uh, baby skunk 
and one raccoon. But I know Mama's here because my camera trap's been telling me so. So what I'm going to do is take both of those out of there and put um, put this other trap, open trap, up against the wall here and right snug and try to basically force the root. So let's try that. All right, so here's the new strategy. I <laughs> got the open mesh cage right up as far as I can put it and then some rocks and concrete to kind of guide the pathway from the den under here straight into the trap. All right, so, and I got the camera still running, so we'll see what happens. Another spin, another rotation, and we are now at Tuesday morning, half past eight. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna go see what's going on with the skunk trap. I don't think it's caught a skunk, or I would have heard word this morning already. But we're gonna go check the, uh, the game cam and see what happened. Things are obviously pretty slow. I have been getting calls, but what they've mostly been has been uh, folks that are running into young wildlife around the city. Um, yesterday I got a call about some people who had encountered a deer fawn just like a meter off the road back here off University Drive. And uh, they were worried that it was abandoned. If you find a, a fawn deer, um, you know, just sitting in the tall grass, that deer's been hidden there by its mom, okay? And she chose this site here, well, first of all, because the deer have been foraging in that long grass area for for a while. It's one of their main strips for foraging, but stashing the fawn next to a busy uh, avenue like University Drive um, is smart for the deer because the fawns are kind of programmed to just lay down and not move so the likelihood that it's going to get up and stumble into the road um, it's, it's slim and then uh, on top of that the predators aren't going to come anywhere near it right because it is right off the side of the road so it's all strategy on the mom's part um, but yeah just leave those fawns there mom's going to be coming back for them Similarly, this morning I got a call uh, from someone on the west side of town here who had a family of raccoons den in her uh, um, in her chimney. Well, mom and the mom had babies and uh, and has raised them, and now they're out of the chimney, um, starting to forage. But she can't get them to climb back up into the chimney. They just don't have the skills yet to get get up get up in there and so they're sitting in one of her uh, window wells on the side of her house and she wants to know what to do about that and um, my advice and I'm, I'm glad she's decided to uh, to take it my advice is just to let them be <laughs> you know I mean yeah I could come out there and uh, pick up all those young raccoons but then we just have orphaned raccoons right mom is gonna find a, a plan B for them if they can't get up in the chimney and, um, you know, just let them do their thing. Patience, she'll get them out of there. So yeah, a lot of people running into young wildlife and I hope they don't feel like I'm blowing them off when they call me and, and I just tell them to leave the scene alone, you know? <laughs> but just, just judging by the descriptions that I'm getting, um, it, it doesn't seem to be cases, like the likelihood is that it's not orphaned animals or anything like that uh, or animals in any kind of you know need of, of assistance um, it's just that the young are out there and they're they're awkward you know um, they're not really equipped especially not to avoid our gaze yet at this point right they they don't know entirely to fear us and so um People are going to be encountering them and it's going to seem weird because the wildlife is, you know, so close. Um, it's unusual. Anyway, we are here at my uh, client's place. So let's go take a peek. Probably this is going to be, <laughs> after now moving into day three, probably this will be the, 
the end of um, the end of this episode. But let's go check it out. Yeah, nobody in the trap. Rocks are not moved. So we'll, we'll download the, what's on the camera and see what happened. So as you saw from the footage, no skunk coming out of that hole last night. Um, at least not that we could see. I don't think she's coming out that way. I think she's coming out maybe from in front of the house. That's what the residents thinking now too. But we haven't had any sights of uh, baby skunks for a while. So I do got a couple of uh, other things this evening. It's now 4.35 and I'm on my way to a rattlesnake call. Just picked up Mahoney and Bell from school and work and uh, got a call on our way home taking us back to Canyon Boulevard there's a sizable rattlesnake in someone's front yard and then got an interesting case over at the um, at the cemetery but I'll tell you about that later let's go get this rattlesnake So this is a young male snake, probably third year, maybe fourth year male snake. It's been pretty calm this whole time, even at the pickup site. So just got to get my photograph of him. got a lot of unique pattern variations so he should be easy to match if I've seen him before. Alright buddy, let's go. Up, up. Say hello to the camera. Hello. Nice wood pile. Lots of probably mice and stuff in there buddy. Off he goes. All right, it's quarter to six now and I'm just pulling into the Mountain View Cemetery. Um, so the deal out here is that they have a marmot that is eating all of the flowers <laughs> that people are leaving on the graves. And uh, you know, and then the, uh, the office here keeps some flowers and stuff like that. It's eating their flowers. They got a couple of flower beds they're concerned about. So basically they want me to trap and remove this marmot. Now, I've never trapped the marmot before, so I'm not exactly sure um, what's going to work right for that. I have brought with me a carrot. <laughs> and we'll see whether or not he goes from a carrot for a carrot. I might have to uh, experiment a little bit. I haven't really even Googled or seen if anybody uh, has anything online about it yet, but... Marmot's basically a big ground squirrel, so um, we'll see. 
we'll see. Anyway, I'm here pulling up at the office now, and I'm uh, gonna go check it out. And this is where they've seen it. We saw him in here too. Yeah. So he can go under the, this building. Oh yeah, there's a good gap there. I, I yeah. uh, have a picture of him. I took a picture of him today. He's right there. Oh yeah. It's not a very. It's not very. It's yeah, hard to see. I can see him though. He's probably living under the building, right? Yeah, like our a couple of our guys have seen him go under right by the, the air conditioning. Okay. Today, though, we saw him out by those concrete boxes. Uh huh. Just like underneath that number four. Oh MB. yeah, that makes sense too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they like those kind of places and they like pipes. We've and had them before here. Yeah. Um, but not for a couple of years. So. Yeah, there's not too many of them that there's a little population at the country club. So that's oh, where really? it, that's where he's probably coming, coming from. from. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's just stashing himself deep in here. So there we we've got the uh, the culprit, the marm the flower eater. Yeah, he's yelling at me. He's in there. So, yeah, I know, you're upset. All right. So I guess we put the trap out here. <laughs> you put something in it? Yeah, although I don't really know what a marmot's gonna go for. So I brought a carrot. Yeah, so I've set up a trap right beside the, those concrete boxes where he's stashed away and um, I baited it with carrot and flower stems from their compost um, so we'll see if he takes that bait if not you know if he's hanging out right in there in that in those concrete boxes I'm pretty sure I could use a catch pole to, to get him somehow catch pole and kennel set up but I might need another pair of hands so stay tuned um, this story is not complete yet. Well, not allowed to call it a night quite yet. <laughs> it's now quarter to eight in the evening and the video that was gonna be like too short and not have enough interesting content is now dragging on for like a 20 to 30 minute saga. <laughs> Sorry guys, um, I can't predict these things. Anyway, I'm rolling down to the Lethbridge Country Club right now because they have a rattlesnake in a bucket for me that they'd like me to pick up and move away. So I'm gonna go do that. <laughs> How goes it? Going well, going well. How about yourself? Pretty good. It's been... Dropping off some stuff here. I am picking oh, you're up a snake. snake, aren't you? Yes, oh, yes, right, yes. Right, right. Quite down in the dark. <laughs> okay, so this is a mature female rattler picked up from the country club and left out in the scenic heights 
area where there is a, a den. I don't get too many uh, calls out this way, but they come on occasion. All right, we'll let her be. And maybe, maybe the snakes will call it a night. We'll see.